the bad boy tour, man. Um, the one that took place in '95. Faith, she said that she didn't go on that tour because she found out Biggie and Little Kim was messing around, and she didn't want to go on tour and be around that. And she also said that she wasn't getting paid for that tour. And she said that's the reason why she ended up in L.A. And she ended up in that picture with Tupac in the club. You being the president at that time, is that true? Let me tell you about the tour. A young company like Bad Boy Entertainment had to break artists. You know, we had these artists signed. We had to make them. Uh, some of them were work artists. And some were artists that had natural talent that had to be exposed. So Biggie came out of the box. Good. Now we had to get these other artists going. The relationship with Arista is that we set Biggie up, we made a success with him. Now let's get this budget drawn down for artist two, artist three, so on and so forth. As we're recording them and getting their music ready, knowing what the sound is about to be about, we get an opportunity to go on the road, one artist is getting paid, we might get a chance to squeeze another artist in, but they have to do it for promo, for free. Arista might pay for their lodgings, their per diem, their food, their room and board, their to and from, but they have to work on that stage and let the audience get to know them and not get paid for it. Sometimes that's the most invaluable marketing campaign startup that you can get, to be out there in front of the audience. Uh, sometimes you can't pay for that. And sometimes an artist not understanding the opportunity would not want to work for free, because that's what it looks like. Someone else is getting paid, I'm doing it for free, I can't see the benefit. So I can see her not doing it and I can see her and I can understand her answer at that point in her career. Maybe if you ask her today, she might have a different view of that opportunity. Also, not to be in the middle of people's relationships, but if, if, if that's what was going on at the time, uh, they were together and he might have been with little Kim, she might not have wanted to be out there in the middle of all of that in the mix. If she gave that on, uh, uh, answer honestly, I would have to accept that as being the truth because all of those things were going on at that time. What was your reaction and what was Biggie's reaction to the picture of Tupac and Faith? And did y'all exactly. know in real time that, you know, she was out there hanging out yeah, in L.A. with Tupac, Suge, and Death Row? Did y'all know? Well, we got word that the, that the, uh, the ladies of Bad Boy were on the West Coast, <laughs> uh, the Queens, were on the West Coast. Uh, uh, Sean's baby mother and, and Biggie's uh, girl, uh, Faith. And... What happened was Misa, a stylist, talented in her own right, uh, wanted to venture out and get checks on her own. Uh, she had little baby Justin. She wanted to make a living for herself. So she started taking and accepting clients. Uh, a part of the way this game works, it's a chess game. Of course, someone from the West is going to know that she's available. They're going to hire her out there to come and style them. So she gets a job a check opportunity that you just would not want to refuse. I could see through it that these people are paying to get her out there. They want to have the picture opportunity. They want to have whatever the opportunity is. We're in the middle of an East Coast, West Coast beef or the startup of it, but people still need to eat. You still need to travel from both coasts to the other. The women don't understand the battle as much as the men do. Some people didn't know about the battle at all. Only a few people. So they're out there on the West and we're thinking of how to protect them how to pull or rein them in, how they went out for one or two days, ended up being a week or two. It went from working to hanging out, partying, and extended stay and chumminess and all of that. Not that I heard from Big Direct, but the things that I had to do was to get these bras back over here, get them back home. Simple. Right. So how did you get Faith and Misa back? I mean, break that down for me, man. Was it difficult to get them from L.A. back to New York? A lot of, you know, hey, what's up? What y'all doing out there? What's going on? What's the problem? A lot of begging and pleading. If their husbands couldn't get them back or their men couldn't get them back, I could only do but stand in the middle and do a little bit of pleading on one knee as I'm hoping that they would come home so that the pressure can be off with these dudes so we can get back to what we need to do, take care of the business as well as all the other things that was happening at the same time. You know, people can't think straight when they think their woman is across the country doing something else. It's simple. Suge Knight. Is it true that Suge Knight took a picture with Misa and Puffy son Justin and Puffy found out about the picture and he went crazy? Take me through that, man. How did that come about? One of those trips, she may have been hired by someone relatable to Death Row or maybe by Death Row exact. I don't know. But the check was right and she took the check 
and she went to the West Coast to do the job. Baby Justin was with her. Somehow she was called to that office. I guess to see the artist or the talent to meet the people that were cutting the check. And it ended up being Suge Knight and she was treated very well. I mean, they laid out for her, like, you know, a welcoming mat and all of that. And um, so well that it got back to the East that she was there in the office and that Suge was meeting Justin Combs and possibly holding him in his arms and that there was a photographer taking a picture and that wasn't the picture that we needed to see on our end or that we wanted the world to see at all. So I remember that day extensively. Um, it, was, it hit us like, you know, a rocket launcher or something. It hit us hard. Uh, I remember getting off the phone. It was almost damn near half a day, maybe two, three o'clock. Maybe in the afternoon, Wendy Day was promoing, announcing something big was going to happen. Not Wendy Day, Wendy Williams. Pardon me, everyone. Wendy Williams, radio personality, TV personality, Wendy Williams was announcing in her super highly rated afternoon show that might have been even syndicated then that she had big news coming that involved Justin Dior Combs. Perked my ear up. I said, yo, what's going on? We started calling everybody. He was calling me. He got a heads up. He started calling the bosses at Hot 97. Uh, the street team was listening. They heard, the executives heard. <laughs> we instantly all left the office, 19th Street, some in cabs, some in cars, some running all the way down to Hudson Street where Hot 97 was to get down there just to handle the situation <laughs> and make sure that that picture was not exposed to the masses and was not delivered through Wendy Williams. In all of that frick of fracas, if you look back, history will tell you that she was let go from Hot 97 over that and had to go to another city to operate out of. And I think she remembers that in, a, uh, in the way she should remember as something that happened that ran her out of town. And then she was able to come back and be the Wendy Williams that she is now today with all the success that she's had. But that was a snafu that day with us and with, with uh, uh, my godson uh, in that picture, that image. On the chessboard, it didn't look right on any level. Common level, behind the curtain, and high principalities and kingdoms level. It didn't look good. Crazy, man. So that's the reason why she got fired from High 97, because of that picture. That picture of Suge Knight and Misa. They fired her. I think that situation led to her being fired. The pressure from old boy in regard to that. Remember, if you go back in time, Hot 97 was launching around the time that Bad Boy launched. We came with the records that helped the rotation to be fulfilled. Flex's, Flex, his career started with Bad Boy early days with the promotional parties uh, with Daddy's house. He was the DJ. Hot 97 coming along, he was the hottest party DJ in the city based on our events, and now he's that DJ in that time slot. We were very influential, we were very impressionable, we had the records, we had the sound for the East, it was an East Coast radio station. We helped them considerably with their launch. So we had access to call when there was a problem at that point in time. There was a problem. 